Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. In this video, we'll be showing you a number of different JUnit 5 uh, asserts and how you can do some JUnit 5 testing. Um, I've already created the project here. If you're interested in how to create the project inside of IntelliJ, uh, see the previous video linked below. But here, assume you've got your JUnit 5 enabled project up and running. Let's go through and see what we can do. We're going to cover some basic asserts, like assert equals. We'll get into doing disabling tests. We'll test an exception. We'll do assert all, which is new in JUnit 5. And we'll do some test at limited timing tests, also new in JUnit 5. Now to test, I'm going to be running this. We call this, pretend this is my production code. It simulates a glass of water. And the things we've got, we've got a liquid type that it's going to store, which is a string. And I've got my percentage full, which is a double. I've got my constructor that uh, initializes the values. I can get and set my liquid type. Note here that when I do the set, it checks for null. We'll see what that's going to do for me. And then later on I've got the percentage fill. So I can get the percentage, I can set it. I've got this function for is empty, which is just going to return a true or false. And I'm going to throw an exception if the percentage fill is incorrect. So let's see how we go about creating our code. So I'm going to start off by clicking on the name of the class inside of my text. I'm going to Alt Enter and say Create Test. In the drop down, I'm going to say I want to do a unit test. And I've already got my project configured to work with that. So let's go through and create our first test. So it's going to be at test. And I can give it any name I like. So it's going to be a void function. And let's say this is going to be uh, test object creation. First thing we'll do is make sure we can build one of these. So I want to build a cup. I'm going to call this one cup equals new cup. And we've got to give it the type of the liquid. Uh, let's say it's going to be water. And then we want to have it, I don't know, 75% full. So I've now got my object created. Let's actually go through and test to make sure it did the right thing. So the first easiest one to do is assert equals. And I'm if I look here, there's a number of different versions that I can use for all the different primitives and object comparison. On objects, it calls the compare to function. So, uh, or is equals function. Um, so let's go and see what we've got. So I've got my cup. I want to say cup. Oh, my, I'm looking to get the answer of water from cup dot get liquid type. And this will be my first test on what it can do. Let's run it. So I can go on the left, right click on my code, and then say run. It'll pop up the JUnit runner here at the bottom. I'm going to shrink this down so we can see more of the code. And it finished. It gave me a green bar, meaning no errors. Let's see what it would look like if I had an error. Um, let's change this to water with a 3 in it. I'll rerun my test with Shift F10. And when it fails, it gives me red up here at the top. It tells me what had gone wrong. And inside of here, I can see all the details of my error. I expected to get water 3, but the actual answer was water. And we can click on this to jump straight to the test that failed. Now, at least half the time, you'll find that your test is wrong. So I'll fix the test here. We run Shift F10, and the test is going to pass. So that's assert equals with an object. I'll duplicate that assert, and I'm going to check uh, that our percentage full is 75. So that's going to be cup get uh, percentage full. Now, as it turns out, I could run this, and it would probably work OK. But anytime you're working with doubles, Checking if they're exactly equal is very kind of tenuous because they can be off by you know a millionth of a point or something. So let's go like this and say we want to set. If I go here, I can specify the delta. So zero dot and zero zero one, we'll say, and we're going to say this is the accuracy I'm expecting on my result. So I'll rerun this, and now we can see that both of these are passing. So that's a basic test of uh, what we've got on. Uh, uh, assert equals. Let's do a couple other ones to bring in here. I'm going to make a new test. Let's call this one test is empty. Is empty. E-M-P-T-Y. And I'm going to create the same as before. And I'm going to put in assert uh, true. And I'm going to say I could go assert that my, C, my cup dot is empty. So this is going to assert that it's empty. And if I look at the code, let me just split this off to the right, split vertically, get rid of the panel on the left. So my test code's on the right, my code under test is on the left, and I'm going to be testing out this function here. Now we're saying if it's equal to zero, it's going to return true. Uh, at the moment, if I run this, of course, it's going to fail. I've got my condition backwards. We can see one test passed, one test failed. If I click on that, it'll show me what happened. The test 
expect it true but was false. I can do a couple of things. I can say assert that it's not equal, or I can say assert false. And this will now allow the test to pass. So that's assert false and assert true can be used that way. Uh, let's look at the next thing. Um, I can do assert not null. So let's do a new one. So at test uh, void uh, test shall we say, let's go with the set liquid type here. We've got this explicit test for null. Set uh, liquid with null. And I'll copy this in. We'll build a new object, and that looks like the object we want. Now if I go cup.set liquid type to null, it should fail. And I can go and I can say I want to assert. Now I could do an assert true and put in any boolean condition I like, but using the named ones adds a little bit of semantics to your, your listing. Rather than just your code having a bunch of things that are true, we can actually kind of describe them better. So I can say assert not null. And I can pass in cup.get liquid type. Because we created the type with water, which it should accept, and then when I try to call set liquid type, it should fail because or it should abandon it, I suppose, because we do not accept a null. So let's run this one. Control Shift F10. And that's working. When I did Control Shift F10 inside of a method, it ran only that method. Uh, L I Q U I D. There you go. Uh, it ran only this method. But if I do it from inside the test, the class as a whole, Control Shift F10, it will rerun. It'll run the entire class and all methods inside of it. Okay. So this is some of the basic ones. Let's imagine we created a new one here. Uh, I'll just duplicate it so I don't have to retype everything. And let's imagine that we had some sort of code. And I'll just put it in a comment. So imagine uh, depending on someone else's code. And let's imagine that we do something in here that has a bug. So maybe we call a library and they didn't implement it correctly. Uh, I'll say test external library, if it was doing something. And we can simulate this, in this case, by just calling fail. Fail is a JUnit test, and basically when you get to a point in your logic, in your code, if you hit fail, it registers as a fall, a failing test. So I'll rerun this, Shift F10, it reruns all previous tests, and we can see here that this test external library is failing on a call to fail. And we can say, well, maybe we're depending on this external thing. I could comment it out until they fix their own, their bug, but then I've got commented code that could be deleted. We're not really tracking what's going on. A much better way is to disable it. So I'm going to put in here an at disabled. And this would be fine if I run Shift F10. It will disable the test. My tests will stay passing. They're in green bar. But up here, we can see that we are not actually running any, a test. And so it kind of gives me that information here. I can click on it, and it says it's been disabled. Now, I might want to add a comment in about why it was disabled. But it turns out I can do better than that. I can add in something here in brackets and describe it. So for example, disable test until library team fixes bug, some bug number. And now when I run my test, if I click on it, it actually gives me the message. And it tells me why was it disabled. So that's quite helpful. OK, uh, a few other things we want to look at. Next one will be asserts. So we, or pardon me, exceptions. Um, down here we can see that when we call set percentage full, it's going to need a, a value between, let's see, it's greater than 0. If it's less than 0 or greater than 100, we're going to throw an exception. So let's make sure it does that. I'll take this code from up here again. And I give it a good name. Uh, so we call it test that set bad percent fails. Uh, throws exception. Just say throws. So we're going to create our object, and then I'm going to call cup.set liquid fill percentage. And let's just do negative 1, a classic. And then we want to assert it. So I'm going to say assert throws. And if I look at the arguments, it is expecting the class that's going to be thrown. I could just pass in exception dot class if I know it's going to throw any exception, but I know specifically which exception to expect. And that's the illegal argument exception. Dot. And I have to put in class so that it is able to reference it. And then I need to give it the code that's going to generate it. So I'm going to use here, I'm going to put in, finish off my uh, code like that. And 
let's give it a lambda function that we're going to execute. So I put in the brackets like that, and then whatever code I want to do. So c dot, let's go set uh, percentage, f uh, wait, uh, <laughs> I've got this backwards, don't I? I don't need the code here. Get rid of that code. That would have thrown an exception. It would have also crashed my register as a fail. But this way, I can actually verify that I'm getting the right one. And I don't need the semicolon there. So now when I run the code, it's going to verify that the correct exception was thrown. And there we have it. It passed. If I get this wrong, so for example, I put in here um, invalid, sure, first one that came up. Rerun the program it's going to be a failure failure, because it generated the wrong exception. Uh, unexpected exception type thrown. So I'll go back to my correct one so we start passing the tests. You want to have your tests always passing, otherwise people will lose confidence in your tests. Now rerun that to make sure it's passing. Looking good. Okay, two last things to go for. Next one is the assert all. So assert all was added into Java 5, or pardon me, Java JUnit 5, and it allows us to test a bunch of related things at once. So let's go with this at test and void. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna copy this up to the top because it's gonna be very similar to an existing test we've got. I'm gonna duplicate this initial test we did, which was verifying that we could build an object. Uh, test creation with uh, assert all, just to show what we can do. So we'll build the same object as before, and rather than having two asserts here, what we're going to do is we're going to run the assert all. So assert all, and I give it a name like uh, correctly builds object, and that's the description of what it's going to do, or what we're testing, and then I can pass in a bunch of lambda functions, for example. Oops. I'll make these into lambda functions of the things that I wish to test. So it's going to be a comma separated list of lambda functions. Let me just pull that over a little bit. And I finish off my test there. So these are the identical tests I had before, just I'm making them lambda functions and running it via assert all. So let's I'm going to control shift F10 this, make sure it actually works correctly. And when it runs fine, it, it doesn't look any different other than I've got this extra crazy bit of lambda functions. But let's go back and see what happens, for example, if I put in water 3 and 75.5, and let's do that to both of them. Water 3, 75.5. So each of these asserts should fail. I'm going to rerun the first one, which was just my good old fashioned checks here. And we can see here I get the one error that, hey, the water was incorrect, but then it stopped. JUnit finished as soon as it found one assert that fa failed. Now, one assert failing is enough to prove that we need to fix something, but maybe the rest of this would have given me some context to understand what had gone wrong. So maybe I'd like to actually see what these had done rather than simply failing out fast. So now I can now I can run this new method that we have here that does the assert all, Control shift f 10 on that. It fails, which is as we expected, but in this case it gives me all of the failures. So it says here, Water 3 was the expected there, but also it tells me everything else. So this is quite handy if you've got a set of related tests that you want to kind of know the answer to altogether. Be careful not to abuse it because it's uh, kind of an extra bit of syntax that you might often not need, but it can be quite helpful if you're trying to uh, kind of work through one big change and test out that that worked all together. So again, the syntax is you give it a description as to what it is, and then you provide a whole bunch of the uh, individual asserts, in this case as lambda functions, uh, to make that, make that all work. So let me run this again just to make sure my tests are back to working. Okay, now the final thing I want to cover is timing. So to do timing, I'm going to provide a function that we probably would never really want here. Uh, so I've got it pre-written, I'll just copy and paste it into here. Imagine somewhere in our system we're trying to do some sort of guessing. So in this case I'm going to try and guess the percentage that my cup is full. Uh, so I'm going to run in an infinite loop until I guess the right number. So I'm going to do a guess with math.random, and if my guess happens to be within a distance of 1 of the percentage that's full in the cup, I'll return the guess. And otherwise we simply stay in the loop until we find it. So not a very good way to go. Let's run a test to, to do that. So I could do, for example, here at test, 
and I can call this one void guess the number I guess a percent and if I just say for example um, new cup so cup cup equals new cup uh, I could give it a water and let's go with 50% just to make it in the middle if I try to go for example assert that assert true that uh, guess the percent on my cup is greater than zero. Maybe that's what we want to do. If I do this and I run it, Control Shift F10, this will run for as long as it needs to. And eventually it will probably, no guarantees, but it'll probably get there. But it's going to take quite a while my tests could run. And maybe by this time I say, well, that's good enough. It should have stopped. So instead what I can do is instead of doing assert true, I can call assert timeout. And I'm going to do timeout preemptively. There's also one for timeout that doesn't actually kill your thing. It just says, well, it only succeeds if it's done in a certain amount of time. In this case, it could run forever. So we'll call timeout preemptively. Now I need to give it a couple arguments. First one is the time. So I'm going to say um, of seconds. And it's going to come from the duration class. So that's good. Of seconds. And I'm going to give it a time of, let's say, four seconds. Let's go five seconds, sure. And then I need to have an executable, so that's going to be my lambda function again. And I can run that. And I think I get rid of that bracket there. There we go. So now it's going to kill it after five seconds. Let me go Control Shift F10 on it. One, two, three, four, five. And it failed. It failed because it should have had a timeout of five seconds. Now it turns out if I were to change my code up here and adjust my threshold, so I'm willing to accept a much larger amount, this code will run. Sometimes it'll take a long longer. Very often it'll finish quickly. So we can see here it finishes quickly. That's great. And in the cases where it finishes much slower, JUnit doesn't just let it run forever. It'll actually stop the test, let the test continue on with the other things. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show on JUnit 5. Have a great day.